get up uh, and let's let's stretch out our knees and our legs. So maybe do a little bit of like, you know, rotating your knees, kind of stretching, kind of just kick in, rotate, kind of move your hips, move your knees, get your knees. If you want to grab it, you want to like kind of grab it behind and, you know, do a little bit of this or a little bit of that. Whatever you want, I'm gonna light this up while you guys are doing it. Light some incense, you know, we gotta honor, honor, honor the, uh, the nice little spirits, you know, all the energy, all the love, uh, why, you know, the teachers, you know it, right? You gotta honor them, always. So you gotta stretch in, <clears throat> and we gotta kind of move around, kind of stretch it out, stretch it out, stretch it out, a little way, way, way. We're gonna do a little bit of dancing right now, but hold on, not yet, don't dance yet, all right? Make sure you just get stretched, okay? You don't wanna dance unless you stretch first, because otherwise, Bad news, guys, bad news, all right? All right, keep be careful, gotta get a stretch, gotta stretch, gotta, gotta stretch, stretch, stretch. All right, all right. So here's the next stretch that we're doing, okay? You're gonna join me, this is an earth meditation we're gonna do, okay? I want you to go down and squat. Everybody squat, can you squat? Squat down, squat down, squat down. All right, we're squatting, are you squatting? Maybe I'll help you, I'll make this video go down a little bit more. All right, I want you to squat, squat, squat. All right, now kind of like kind of move around while you're squatting, kind of like, you know, get, get a nice stretch in there. Maybe it's comfortable with summer bus, maybe it's easy, or maybe it's hard, you can bounce up and down, you can bounce while you're squatting. It's good to bounce, kind of shake around, move around and that feels good. And okay, we're gonna do earth meditation with this. Okay, I want you to put your hands on the earth or maybe it's your, your ground, just put it down. And take a moment, we watched this beautiful video, this beautiful movie about the earth Close your eyes and think about as you're touching the earth, what's in the earth? Think about all the microorganisms, all the plants, all the earthworms. What's in the earth, guys? The plant, oh my gosh, there's so much stuff in the earth, right? You learn so much about it. There's water, there's carbon. So think about that for a moment. As you think about the earth with your hands on the earth, just meditate really quickly while you're in this position about your relationship to all of that, how you love those earthworms and you love those bacteria, and you love all the other things in the earth, the plants, the trees, all the things in the earth that make us, help us to be alive and happy and healthy. Oh my gosh, feels so good. Oh, keeping your hands there, keep it a little bit longer. And when you're ready, I want you to keep your hands on the ground, but lift your butt up, lift your butt into the sky. Lift your butt into the sky, keep your hands on the ground and keep thinking about the earth. And maybe you could kind of move back and forth and you can move back and forth. And keeping the bending, keeping that bend. Bend a little bit more. Can you lift your butt up higher? Can you lift your butt up higher, higher, higher? Bring your head down. Very good. Oh my God. Woo! All right, here we go. Now slowly come up. Slowly, 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 slowly. Take your time. Slowly come up. Slowly, 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 slowly come up. All right, all right, all right. Hold on, hold on. All right, here we go. All right, here we go. You guys ready? Lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. Now we get one. We do earth dancing. Earth dancing. Earth dancing. Gonna hit you. Put your foot down. Put your foot down. All right, there we go. Put your foot down. Put your foot down. Bounce on the earth. We're gonna hit the earth. Hit the earth. Hit the earth. Be like, hello, earth. Hello. 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 Hello.
dancing over here all right let's come back come back come back join me take a breath Woo. and what you could do right now is what i'm going to ask you guys is get your both your feet shoulder width apart shoulder width shoulder width apart and let's get our hands at our heart close your eyes and take a moment just to breathe deeply big deep breaths because we just moved around a lot so some big deep breaths really big and deep kind of relaxing your body you guys we've been moving around a lot so take a moment Big deep breaths. And maybe this next deep breath you take, take a big deep breath in and let's take a big sigh together. Ah. Uh, <laughs> okay, let's do it again. Big deep breath. Hold it, hold it, hold it. And a big sigh. Ah. <laughs> you can do a yawn too. All right, one more time. Big deep breath. Hold it, hold it, hold it. And a big sigh. Ah. <laughs> big sigh. Awesome, mate. rub your hands. Rub your hands, I see that. Rub your hands, rub your hands, rub your hands. Rub, 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 make it hot, make it hot. All right, put it on your feet. Put your foot on your face, rub it on your face. Oh, I feel good. Let's wake up, we're here guys, welcome. Oh my gosh, this is no longer Chintula all over here. So I gotta rename this, cause Chintula has gotta take a break over there. Chintula, are you okay? What's going on? Are you all right, all right? Okay, you're good. Okay, okay. Woo, hey guys, welcome. Welcome to Cosmic Labyrinth. Uh, really quickly, we're an awesome group of like cosmic labyrinthers. We're wizards and teachers and educators and parents and everything in between, Re scientists, you name it. What are we? I don't know. We're a lot of stuff, but we really care about creating experiences like this where we learn, we connect, and we share. So here you are. So we've got Trinity there. Trinity's taught a class before. What's up, Trinity? Yeah, Trinity taught a, taught a rock painting class before. So we also encourage kids to teach awesome stuff so that we, they can be empowered to share and teach us. And well, let's see, who else do we got here? Sarissa, oh my gosh. We got a resident earth wizard here. Aloha. Sarissa. What? Yeah, I'm so glad you're joining us. Who else is from Cosmic Labyrinth here? Who else is a, an educator, a teacher here? We got Kelly, raise your hand, Kelly. 
Eh. Hi. We got Mick. What's up, Mick? Peace, peace. Hello. I come in peace. What else we got? We got Prachi. Hi, Prachi. Hi. We got Charlie. We got Charlie. Charlie, hi. All right. We got Kat, Brian. We got so many awesome people here. Tess. Hello, Tess. We got Kat. Who's America Film? Hi, America Film. <laughs> Wait, who's the little dog? Who's the elephant? What's the elephant's name? The elephant, Clara. The elephant? What's the name? There's an elephant in the room. What is it? Candy. Candy cane. Candy cane. Delicious. Candy cane. Hi, Clara. Hi, America. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Ma. <laughs> so, so. So to get this thing going, let's get this launch and started already. We have some amazing panelists here, um, but I want to honor people. So let's actually start. Um, Ryan, there was somebody you wanted us to, to introduce us to for this panel. Who was that? Is she here? Oh, you're muted. You're muted. Can't hear you. <laughs> I was all excited to start talking, but I'm muted. <laughs> hey, Indy, thank you for having us. Um, and yeah, it's my great pleasure to introduce my friend Shalini. Uh, she actually is a big part of Brown's Ranch. She, um, the you know, the guy that was, you know, comparing his neighbors to his and the dark, the, the 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 brown dirt to the lush green. She's a big part of that ranch. She actually works there, and she knows that family very well. She's actually becoming part of it, if she hasn't already. Um, so yeah, she is here to answer any questions anybody may have about about regenerative agriculture. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Hey, well, hey, oh, there you are, Shalini, hi. Hi, yeah, so right. I guess a little background. I've yeah. been at the Browns Ranch now for five years. Um, I started here as an intern, supposed to be for six months, grew up in Southern California and thought, hell, why not go to North Dakota? Cause that's cool. And uh, now it's five years later somewhat of a permanent internship. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, uh, I was really excited when Ryan uh, asked me uh, to come join you guys. To field any questions that you might have after watching um, that film. I was not in it again, intern, but <laughs> if I if you guys have any questions, I'd love to answer them yeah, for you. We were all, we were all like, what? why is she going to North Dakota? What is happening? But now everybody is realizing she's five years ahead of everybody else and she's kind of a genius. Agreed. So, okay, let's, let's, before we even get started with the panel, let's do a really quick tune in with everybody that's here since we have a good amount of people and everybody can participate. Um, so whoever wants to put their hand up first, but maybe the leaders can take charge on this. Um, let's, what, like if you were a plant or a tree, right? Or a fungi, which one would you be? Like, so like, let's go around and say our name and which one we would be. So I'm gonna, I'll start with myself. I would be a, um, I would be a, um, an apple tree. That's me, like an awesome apple, like a delicious, yummy apple tree. Okay, so I got the energy ball, okay? And my name is Indy, by the way, Indy, and I'm an apple tree. Okay, here, so here's my thing, my ball. I'm gonna throw it over to, I'm gonna throw it over to the Prachi. Oh my gosh. Oh, Can I, I'm gonna, oh. That's a great apple. <laughs> I think it's a Fuji. <laughs> hmm. If I were any plant, I really love all the plants. And I am going to call in the California poppy because after the wildfires, they showed up everywhere. They're bright, beautiful, orange, and give people a lot of hope. So. I'm a California poppy and I'm seeing where, where the energy ball is going to go. Everyone, you have to have your unmuting buttons ready because it could come to you and you don't know. <laughs> come run, this is going to you. <laughs> oh, okay, I got it. <sighs> I'd probably be a snapdragon because it's it represents the fiery part of me and my well-being. And I am very passionate about helping the earth. And I think that there's a very good chance it's possible we could fix it this once and for all. I'm going to make the energy ball and pass it over to Hengi. Okay, thank you for that. I would, uh, I have, I'm having a hard time choosing between a snowdrop and a sunflower. Um, 
snowdrop because of just like the purity and, and like the rarity and we all want to feel like we're special in the world and all that stuff. But then I'm thinking the sunflower is probably better because it takes the sun and it converts it into energy and it spreads its seeds all over the place and it's just really happy and beautiful all the time. <laughs> Let me pass it over to Kat. There it is. Hi, I'm Kat. I think I would be a sequoia. And um, I think because they get to interact with all the elements and all the birds, the hawks and the big birds that fly up there, but they're also connected in and, and and sharing with their community through the root structure very deeply and as well as all the electromagnetic signals that they're sending out um, in the community. And so, and they're also a um, kind of a barometer of that we need to change how we're doing things today. And I love your sequoias, Indy. I'm gonna throw it over to America. Okay, Clara's gonna star. Uh, I like a pink rose. A pink rose. Why would you pick a pink rose? Because I like the hot pink in, in it. Okay. And you, Amadu? What flower or tree or fungus or anything? I'll be a mushroom because I like eating mushrooms. Okay. A great answer. Good answer. <laughs> and I'm going to be a big sunflower because I love to be grand and sunny and big. <laughs> I love that. And who we're going to pick next? Uh, uh, Pick anyone. Uh, uh. <laughs> we picked Charlie. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Charlie, and I think I would pick a grapefruit tree. I think um, they're just super useful right now, and it's great. Um, it's, it's, they're in great season, so I've been picking down a lot of grapefruits lately. So, ruby red grapefruits. So. <laughs> Definitely be a grapefruit tree. Um, and I'm gonna pass it on to, to, to Mick. Whew, all right, got it. Ah, and now I'm gonna be a fellow Sequoia because I just visited the Sequoias and they really, really inspired me, especially the, the, the way that they're able to survive major forest fires. Um, and some of the sequoias are almost completely charred, like half charred, and they're still going strong and are able to heal and recuperate. And so I think it's a really symbol of resilience that they're able to regenerate and recuperate. And their seeds are tiny. I was like doing some investigation, like their pine cones are this big, and the seeds are are like they're they're minuscule. They're and to make the giant, this giant tree, the seed is like about three millimeters in diameter. I was just like, I was blown away. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh. And I'm gonna pass the ball over to Sarissa because she just unmuted. <laughs> yeah. <Wow>. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, I was going to say sunflower as well. So I was with America on that. It's definitely one of my favorite flowers. Um, but I think I'd be a cacao tree because I love cacao and chocolate makes me really happy. And it, even though it's bitter, it's really good medicine. So yeah, cacao. <laughs> um, I'm going to pass it over to Adam. Oh, well, all this amazing energy in one ball. <laughs> so I'm going to, 
I'm going to be Lily Plant. And I'm going to make the ball do this like a lily. I will pass the lily ball to who didn't who didn't have it? Uh, Trinity. Well, I think it's Trinity's turn. Are you ready? Thank. Um, I think I would be a sage plant because they smell good and um, they're just really good. And yeah. <laughs> what do you think I want to say? What do you want to be, sis? A tulip. A tulip. Why? Mm. Because tulips are cool. I'm up in the spring. Look, you have tulips right there. Because they come in many colors. Many colors of tulips. Okay, anybody else? Pass the ball of energy now. Um, I'll do it. <laughs> my dad's coming in. <laughs> hey, everyone. I would be mycelium because it is like the neuro network of a healthy economy and ecosystem. I would have to be echinacea flower because it is uh, medicinal. And also, it attracts bees and butterflies and becomes food for um, a whole network um, and that creates biodiversity. And we will pass the ball of energy to closest out there. Um, Raise your hand if you haven't been selected, or there's some non video people too. So, who, who do we got? Do, 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 raise your hand or raise your hand in the chat who hasn't gone, who hasn't gone yet. I think. Um, there's a few, there's Ryan hasn't gone. Uh, uh, there also is Shalini hasn't gone. Kelly, wait, Kelly, did you go? Kelly, you went. No, Kelly hasn't went. Okay, we passed it on to Kelly. <laughs> oh, this is good energy in here. Thank you all, oh, yummy fun. Um, if a sunflower and a cacao tree were to make to organically crossbreed, that is who I am arriving as today. Um, an original, but a goodie. And we're gonna take this energy, amplify it, and we are going to Ryan and company. <sighs> <laughs> oh, okay, good. We're unmuted. Oh, this, yeah, this ball is, is huge, but also light. It's pulling me up. It's a helium balloon, I think. Um, this is my girlfriend, Kimia, and we decided we are a orange tree, um, mainly because that is the only plant that I currently am growing, and I love it. It produces bountiful fruit every Make year. ornaments. And it's our only Christmas tree ornaments thus far. <laughs> And Nat I natural Christmas, natural Christmas. Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> yeah, it was, um, I was just looking at it a few days ago and I noticed how it looks so much like the sun. Like if you were a kid, you would draw the sun exactly like that circle with the rays. So that's why I picked it because it just reminds me of the sun. <laughs> and we want to spread light through the world like the sunburst rays. Yeah. All right. Who do you who do you guys go, make a selection? There's some new people now that are visible. So. Um. Well, I mean, if she'll go, I'll pass it to my friend Shalini. Ready? Ready? There you go. <laughs> guys, this has been a. I've been in a part of a lot of Zoom meetings, and this ball of energy is something else. That's great. Um, 
But as far as what I would choose, I am going to have to go uh, very similarly to Trinity's dad to mycorrhizal fungi um, because of their vital role in their expanse. Um, and it shows us how when everything is really working together, we can all be healthy. Um, and like just the craziness of how big they get is to me a metaphor of we need to come together as an entire planet. Everyone needs to support each other, feedback, nutrients, and good energy, like this ball of energy. Um, so on that note, I'm gonna pass this over to Katarina. <laughs> Hi everyone. Thank you, Hengi, for inviting me to this amazing um, Zoom session. Um, if I had to um, pick a um, plant, uh, I'd pick a flower and I would pick the rose because it represents love and passion, um, which are I, I can't imagine my life without love and passion. And I also admire the rose for um, the fact that uh, across cultures and for centuries, the rose has conveyed, um, it's been a symbol of a lot of messages uh, in politics and love. It's, it's, it's a very um, symbolic, um, it's just, it represents a lot without without um, speaking, right? It's a, it's a very symbolic flower. So I would pick the rose. That's my, and it's, and it's the national flower of Iran, which is where I'm from. So it's extra important. <laughs> Thank you. We have a Mac, we have a MacBook Pro and a Sam still remaining. Pass that ball. We're gonna throw it over to Katarina. Throw that energy ball over. Wait, Katarina, can you hear me? Yeah, Katarina. just unmute. Let's just throw it over to Sam. Let's Sam. put him on the spot. <laughs> Oh, thank you. You got to mute, Angie, because I sit right next to her. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Obviously, uh, I, I'm going to be cat grass because I have a little kitty here resting on my, uh, on my shoulder and she's sleeping. Um, and I say it slightly jokingly, but I do believe in, in plants that help um, animals heal and keep them calm and uh, something that attracts them. I love animals. Uh, I love anything that does not hurt animals. So uh, today I will choose the the, the cat grass. Uh, I do love all the, the sequoias and echinaceas and all the beautiful plants though that you guys have been mentioning. So I'll throw it over to, to be completely honest, I have no idea who hasn't had it. So if anybody's keeping track. I think Mac, I think MacBook Pro is still, is that, is that Steve Jobs? Yeah, Steve Spirit. <laughs> MacBook Steve Jobs Spirit Pro. Here you go. go ahead. MacBook. Well, the kitty got, kitty got up. MacBook like Pro, hear us. Are you there? Robot 110 one, one. MacBook Pro just changed their photo to the flower. Oh, that's that's a better answer. We don't like, need to. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Um, and we got everybody looks like amazing. So, hey, oh, wait, hold on. Did, Tess, did, we didn't get you. Tess, are you there? And... Tess. Hello. No, I guess not. So I guess we got everybody for now. So, okay, welcome. Oh my God. So we're kind of early and in being early, I do want to say one thing really quickly, if I may drop a thing in there, let's all really quickly um, maybe have a minute of silence for all the farmers out there. Maybe let's take a moment and just have just hold space. You could keep your eyes open. You could close your eyes. Let's just take a moment to have gratitude for all the farmers, like all the families of the farmers, all the people who cultivate our food. Like think for a moment what they do, how hard they work 
there's there's immigrants who are farmers there's farmers from our countries if you're from iran or india or china wherever you're from in the world farmers help feed all of us so let's take let's take a moment and just honor the farmers let's say, let's appreciate them for a moment let's let's even visualize them and how they're working this maybe they're sleeping better tonight because we're thinking about them maybe maybe around the world where farmers need support they're getting they're getting our support right now us thinking about them they're feeling more empowered they're feeling that that people are thinking about them it feels good yep. right when people think about you so let's yep. take a moment appreciate the farmers right and just take a moment just visualize them have gratitude for the farmers maybe the next time you're eating a fruit you're going to think about these farmers next time you're eating some vegetables think about these farmers your bread whatever you eat oh my gosh everything is from the farmers so thank you farmers thank you thank you thank you and with that being said um let's take that meditation and let's swing it over really quickly and i think it's, it's so awesome to have these awesome like these awesome ki cosmic kids here so we got cameron cameron how's it going you get to you know i want i wanted to start things off with you because i just want everybody to acknowledge it's cameron's birthday tomorrow cameron it's your birthday tomorrow so let's all well, how old are you, cameron? cameron how old are you turning how many solar how many solar cycles have you have you done around the sun 12 well turning 12 so you've done 12 cycle around the sun. Whoa, all right. Wow, well, happy birthday, everybody. Is there like a happy birthday song? Do we know, is there like a, is there, how do the, uh, happy birthday, can we do it all together? Mm -hmm. let's, all, let's all rock it, ready? Here we go, one, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Cameron. Happy birthday to you. On channel two with Scooby Doo, that all with all of the things that you can do. <laughs> I don't know how it goes. Channel forty-four, you know, whatever how it goes. Um, so Cameron, really quick. What are your thoughts on the film? Like, what do you, how did you, what do you feel? Like, what do you feel about the film? What are your thoughts also being a 12 year old? Like, what, what do you want to share with the adults in this room? Or what are some thoughts you want to share with all of us? Personally, I felt it was pretty empowering and different from other types of films where it had that moment of showing that how bad the situation is but it shows so many ways and how we could help from big to small and how to help this and change the ecosystems and the climate and how we can change by doing every single thing, every single day without even noticing it. Do you, do you have any questions for like, like for example, right here, we have Shalini who is a farmer. Do you have any questions for her like in particular? really I, I understand it like pretty thoroughly um so with with that with that being said trinity i know that you actually live out in the forest right so what are your thoughts about nature and like what are wh how do you feel living in it like wh what is how do you feel like your life is compared to other kids um pretty lucky actually and um being out here, um, it has its abilities, but also has its weak weak weaknesses sometimes. So yeah. So so I'm gonna throw yeah. something over. I'm gonna throw something over. Do you have any questions, Trinity, for any of the any of the um, adults or anybody about um. the farming stuff? No, nope. not really. So, so let's throw over something to Shalini. So, Shalini, you work on the farm, right? Like, do you notice? Like, is there is there something about being on the farm that changes you? Like, do you feel like it's the same as when you were living in the city or you were doing the normal thing? How do you feel now? Oh, um, I would say it has created a, a spiritual connection between me um, and Mother Nature and food. Um, growing up in the suburbs. I knew that farmers grew the food, but it wasn't really a second thought after that. Um, I mean, I was lucky we did have agriculture all around us. I was sad when the cornfield got turned into um, just hoop houses of soft fruit that I couldn't see what was going on. Um, but I didn't really have a connection with food 
until I started working on farms. Um, and my life story is one that I found it so organically. Um, you know, I had, I was all set to go to vet school. I was knee deep in a sow pen and I was cleaning out her, her mess basically. And that was the moment that I realized that I am at one with myself and how else am I supposed to live my life? Uh, if I'm not doing this, is anything else going to be nearly as fulfilling? I was like, and this is literally me just scooping poop. Um, and <laughs> not even like being able to, it was, I was woofing. I couldn't even like share the fruits of my labor uh, with people around me yet. Uh, but that spirituality was something that it hadn't ever really touched me uh, before. Um, and so I'm not a very religious person, but my connection with Mother Earth uh, has made me a very spiritual person. Um, and then being able to share now the fruits of our labors and then give the nourishment to people who don't have the opportunity to be outside, or maybe that's not what completes them and that's okay, but we still get to share our love through food. Um, is yeah, I guess that's my spiritual journey with earth in a nutshell. That's beautiful. You know, that you actually brought up something that I would love to ask the kids, whether Trinity or Cameron or America, if anybody wants to bring answer this, what do you, do you guys think earth is alive? Like is earth living or is it like, what, who wants to take that answer? What do you think? Maybe some of the adults want to take this answer. I don't know, but like, I would love to hear from Cameron or from Trinity or Amer America. Yeah. Clara. Clara is her daughter. Clara. 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 Do you want to uh, answer? I think, I think Earth is alive because it's always spinning around. Right? It's, I mean, it's growing all the time, right? Like, Can you hear Mother Earth sometimes? Yeah. Can you hear the heartbeat maybe when you're in the forest? What do you hear when you're in the I hear I hear animals like squirrels stepping on the floor of the hard leaves that fall down of the tree. What about your brother? Do you want? Do you have an answer? Yeah. So we we feel Mother Earth when when there's an earthquake and and she's war warning us that something's going on that does not right. So. We have to take care of it all the time. <laughs> Your head is just scaring me. <laughs> <laughs> Wanna share your rainbow since we were talking about that rainbow? Yeah. I have a rainbow background that I made. Okay. Uh, we're gonna move. Cool, out. beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. And the earth speaks that too. Me for the rainbows. Uh, C Cameron, what do you think about the Earth being alive? Yay, nay, maybe? It's very alive, uh, spiritually and just common sense. It's not just animals. I've learned in uh, science class today, there's uh, two like different groups from living and non-living things on the Earth. They both interact to make the ecosystem and they are both very alive. The plants, they're moving. The little, it, even in the, in the movie, they shown under the microscope how all the tiny little particles and the cells are moving. And I can go on and on about the structures of the ecosystems and the plants, even the animals, but we're all connected uh, throughout uh, our minds and uh, our bodies and how they were built. Plants and humans are very similar. Maybe that's why we're supposed to eat them or there's something going on there. Like, like it's like this weird thing where we're like, we're supposed to eat them. <laughs> What's going on there? Um, what about, what about, uh, what about Trinity? What are your thoughts? Do you think the earth is alive? Yeah, I think it is alive because um, it, growing um it's growing plant 
and it's um, making the water flow and the breeze. And yeah, I think it's very much alive. So I'm gonna throw this question to our, like the other people, the, all the adults, we got Ryan, we got Hangy, we got so many amazing people even, and, and the non-video ones. How can we take care, if she's alive, if Earth is alive, how can we take care of her better? Like what can we do? together or individually, or are you guys doing stuff? So any answers, anybody wanna put their hand up and their thoughts on that? Yeah, go ahead, Prachi. Well, um, you know, I actually go out and I don't have to go outside, but I talk to Mama Earth and I've I found that she talks back. Like sometimes she'll sing to me or she'll do these like, really deep toning sounds and the way that I feel like I'm contributing to wellness on the planet is by just being so grateful like when I go outside I say hello to the trees um, if there are any flower buds or anything coming down I ask her permission if I can say hello and hold them and sometimes I give them a kiss and I just really am very happy just talking and being grateful for their beauty and their presence. And I feel like that, that does a lot because mother nature and the fairies and the elementals are being acknowledged because they are doing so much like changing for those of us that live in four season climates, they're changing the colors like all the time and actually everyone like changing the colors of the sun when it goes to sunrise and sunset. So I just say thank you and ask permission and talk. Anyone else, want to, any other adults want to take a stab or at, at, a shot at that? How, how do we take care of mother earth? If she's alive, how do we do that? I think yes, one of the... Oh, uh, Ryan, let's go Hengi first and we'll Ryan second. Go ahead, Hengi. So I can share that um, I grew up in Sweden and in Sweden, we essentially grow up feeling and finding it really normative and normal to recycle, reuse, reduce, upcycle. And um, things that I took for granted as a child, really guys, is a huge ordeal in America. Right now we're still learning in America how to even put our leftover food scraps and fruits and such back into the soil. People are in the cities such as ourselves, even though we're not in the inner city of Los Angeles personally, we're still looking for like local farms where we could just donate our food scraps that turn into fertile soil, for example. And I love that this movement is growing, but I wanna say that other parts of the world, they're really ahead of the game. And um, products, really, really important for our family to invest in companies that give back to mother earth, that replant trees, that constantly have it a part of their integrity and social impact to make sure that the money that they're making goes back to regener regenerative forces. And so I think we have to think about everything from how we spend our dollars to how we shape our culture to how we actually deal with things on a day-to-day -day basis. So for example, if we were to buy plates, if we're out picnicking, we can pay a little bit extra, but buy the plates that actually go back into the soil and um, not buy the plastic ones or the ones that won't really go into the soil at all. You know, that would, you know, um, I, I can't remember what the word is, but the, the white plasticky ones that won't really takes them over 200 years mm -hmm. to, to melt in. Or everybody knows about the straw issue, right? Here in California, we became really, really knowledgeable about that for a minute there where we stopped using straws and we went bamboo or metal and or no straw so just uh i do think money how we spend it as well as who we spend it on and then our everyday practices on small little decisions that grow into mountains over time with food and reducing and reusing and upcycling and all those things super important in my opinion I, awesome um, I think that's fantastic. You're right. It's about our money speaks so much and just making small choice, small things can actually grow and, and take, you can expand. Ryan, you want to expand on that or you have a perspective? 
I was just thinking about the most amazing part of the film to me is that we can control the rain. If we grow plants, they, they make more water in the air because of the transpiration, because of how they're breathing and just being there, just being alive, existing. And I've actually experienced it in a really small way where I've been doing a lot of, of landscaping in my own, my own house. And I did realize that if there's a little bit of bare ground, a little bit of bare earth, it dries up in the sun in maybe an hour. And then that just spreads if you let it stay that way. But if you just plant a tiny little plant there and cover the bare earth, then it, you don't have to do any work to it after that. Nature takes over and it's just like this magic process where it just all blossoms and blooms and makes flowers and helps the plants around it. And I just think that's so amazing that we can control the rain just by planting plants, covering the bare earth. And it's, it's so powerful and it's so amazing. And that's just, wow. <laughs> like, wow. We, we used to do rain dances and, and just pray for rain, but we can actually control the rainfall and stop the droughts by our regenerative agriculture practices. And that's amazing. And you can even do it in your backyard, like Jason Mraz said, it's, um, it's amazing. Wait, but can we still do rain dances too? Of course. <laughs> do rain dances. That's why I do rain dances all the time. Um, what, what about partner over there with the glasses? What are your thoughts? <laughs> and we're both vegetarian. We've been vegetarian for years because like animals are so cool. I cannot kill an animal and eat it. And that helps a lot too, actually, yeah. in a small way. Yeah, well, I think just living simply, like in our day-to-day -day lives, like having, being less impulsive and doing things that are meaningful uh, with our mm -hmm. actions, yeah. like not, uh, like, you know, how people just go shopping so much and just buy things that they don't, they don't really need or they don't really want to use long term it's just like yeah. you just want to use it for a few days and, and then that's it it just goes to waste like, sometimes like i would wait for you yeah just living simply and being grateful um and just you know tuning into nature and possibly buying land if you can and growing your own garden um starting your own food um Back in your backyard or something. Yeah, that's our plan actually. We are looking to buy land and all of that good stuff. <laughs> hey, wait, that's that's what we're that's what we're trying to do over here too. Wait a second. <laughs> we all want similar, very similar things. Um, that being said, let me throw some. We had some comments in the chat. Um, I'm gonna read what um what was it? Cat said something. But Cat, would you like to share and jump on the mic and? share what you wrote but more in detail? Sure, sorry guys, I'm eating dinner with my doggy here, but um, so I didn't wanna have you watching that, but I'm really enjoying the discussion and I agree with what everyone is saying. And, you know, we, it's not an original idea of biomimicry, you know, this goes back a, a long time. And Indy, when you were asking about is the earth alive, you know, everything has a resonant frequency. And a lot of you have talked about that and we're all connected in to everything to each other and to everything and you know our our hearts energy extends out like something like 55 feet this has been measured you know it's like by researchers at stanford we have the ability to make a big impact but more importantly um you know the earth has already figured out all the little systems i'm an engineer i have a phd in engineering and look mother earth is the smartest engineer ever and we just need to copy her. If we have any kind of problem, we can see how, you know, Mother Earth has already figured out solutions. And, and I'm not just, it can be any kind of problem, but I love Kiss the Ground and Fantastic Fungi and, you know, movies like that, that make those things accessible to people who maybe aren't as spiritual as all of us here, you know, I'm preaching to the choir here, but how do we get that, that message, um, you know, to, to people that, that, don't necessarily understand that when your feet are touching the earth and you're taking in the sun's electromagnetic energy, you're completing a circuit, just like the plants are and just like we're all electromagnetically connected. And that's really what 
keeps us alive. And so anyway, I don't want to talk too much, but um, thank you for the conversation. It's beautiful. Appreciate it. We can listen to you talk forever, Kat. Tell us more science. One, one, zero, zero. <laughs> thank thank you. I actually yeah. did want to ask Kat how this whole electromagnetic thing works. Kat, would you be willing to share? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm- But can you, I'm, but can you explain it also for the kids? Kat, 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 also explain it for the, the kids can understand it because that's like next level stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me think. Um, so I think I think Cameron can explain that for the kids because he got it right. You were when you were talking, Cameron. I was like, yes, exactly. You get it, and and so you may be the one to explain that um, for the kids. But it's all about that. Everything vibrates, and everything has a frequency that it vibrates at. And if you want to do an experiment on that, um, you can you can think about or or maybe watch something like. Um, the collapse of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, because what happens is when we're vibrating at that frequency, we just, it's, it's perpetual, it keeps going, it's, you know, it's constant. Um, and I, I'm just coming to these theories that, you know, every food we have, this is an epiphany I had a while ago, is that as I open my root chakra more to earth, so as I do the exercises that Indy opened the session with, I eat foods that are earth foods. They're, they're things like, I used to hate sweet potatoes, right? But now I love them as, my, as I'm connected to the earth. And, and that's, that's a, I think, it's a theory, that connects us into the earth, those earth foods, things that are grown beneath, you know, beneath the earth and mushrooms. Um, one, of you, one of your kids mentioned mushrooms and how much you love them. And, you know, and is if you eat the rainbow, each one of those foods resonates with a different part of your body. And so anyway, there's been a lot of studies that, um, and Indy, um, you know a lot about this, I'm sure, about how you don't really need to eat that much food. You can live off of the electromagnetic energy of the sun and the earth. And, and if you focus there, um, but it takes purposeful focus, not this disconnected way that we live right now where we're, you know, on our phones or on our computers and, and all of that. So, um, but, don't, but don't get off your computer right now because we need you yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on our computer. Cause this we're connecting, right. We're all connecting here through our love and, and our shared community. I mean, you know, like TV and just disconnecting that way. So, and I, I would even say when she said, eat the rainbow, that doesn't mean eat Skittles. <laughs> that means eat the plants, okay, and fruits that look that are the colors of the rainbow. <laughs> Thanks for that clarification, Indy, because sugar is bad, and um, yeah, sugars sugars not good. Sugar is one of the things that dumbs us down, right? And so that's intentional um, that that sugar is put into our food sure. our food pyramid. So anyway, I'm gonna stop. But yes, go somebody sure. else go. Okay. Sure, maybe. So I know maybe, maybe Cameron, can you explain what Brachi was asking the electromagnetic field? Like, do you, are you familiar with that? Well, not yet. Hopefully I get to dabble in that kind of path at class, but I've been taking many, many notes and I've been doing research in my own time. It's quite fascinating, but it's just even like Kat said, like uh, eating certain foods from the rainbow can help you feel connected to the earth. For me, I feel, it feels like learning about the earth helps me understand it and feel connected. I would second that. I, I would say, Cameron, I'm addicted to learning. <laughs> I, like, I like can't stop learning all the time. I'm sure a lot of people here resonate with that. Um, re really quickly, uh, Amaru, I, we haven't heard from you much. What are your thoughts? Is the earth alive? And like, how can we help it? How can we like connect with it more? Mm. <laughs> Good idea, remember? Can't remember. How can you connect with the earth? When, when we go for a walk, or when you're in the ocean, how do you feel that you can connect to it? 
from just walking on it. You know? True. Just feeling it. True. Just walking yeah. around True. and the tree is giving me rare. I don't know. <laughs> I just had it. I don't remember. We are in New York and it's almost 9 30. <laughs> it's a oh, little okay. past their bedtime, but we are holding it together here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd like to share. Yes. So especially um, coming back to Hawaii, where I, I, you know, I fell in love with it when I was younger in high school, and um, I kept coming back. And so now that I've been here for a bit, um, and being on the big island where, you know, like you said, you could just walk on the earth. I mean, the second you touch the ground, especially here, it's so alive. It's like, the, you know, the, you can feel, you know, they call her Pele, the go the goddess of the volcano, right? Um, and if you can go visit the volcanoes here, and even though she was just erupting for like, I don't know, over 30 years there for a bit, you know, you see that the lava, the, the lava rock, it, it's so different. The earth is different, right? And it's so fresh. It's something that just came out of the core of the earth. And it never ceases to amaze me the first time I ever saw lava when I was in high school. It's just slow creeping and and just so powerful. Um, even though it's fluid, it's just got this, this wonderful power and being here, being here reminds me of that. It reminds me that the earth is alive, that the earth is moving, even if it's not visible for us on the outside, that inside there's all these different layers and this hot magma comes out of it. Um, and that to me is such a huge reminder of like, wow, we live on a living rock. We live on a rock that is has so many different environments um, that we're not even, you know, privy to. We, we don't um, know. So, uh, that to me is something here that is so amazing that and composting, which we've touched on of like, you know, you take what you think is your garbage and you give it back to the plants and they continue to give you fruit. And that's so beautiful because it's just this amazing symbiotic relationship that you can, you can have, um, with the land and it's not even difficult. You know, it's like you take what you don't use, you know, you go feed it back to the land and it does its thing. You know, you don't you don't need to do um, much else. If you show it love, it will show you love. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so I got to So really quickly, I also want to throw out there while we continue this panel, if anybody has questions for each other or wants to throw a question up for everybody to kind of like answer or any of the kids have an idea or any of the catalysts, the, the cosmic adult catalysts have any ideas for questions. Oh, wait, we have a hand raised. Clara, you guys have a question? Yeah, go ahead. I have this candy. I've been studying for my homework. It's called the cap off tree. And this man comes and cut down a cap off tree and all and he got tired and all sorts of animals came and told him to not cut down the tree. But he 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 kind of cut down the tree, but but then after he met an Indian kid and he said, uh, what's his name? We need the tree because we need the tree for what? What the tree just for we us, need, remember? We what need. the animals said? The tree gives us oh. oxygen. It's the, the animals. Clara, the Clara, Clara, one day will you, will you read the book for other kids? Like for us, would you be able, would you like to do that? That would be cool because we could share it to other kids around the world, if you want. Yeah. Sweet. How it ended? How it ended? Just say what happened at the end. It ended when when the man dropped down his axe and he and he rem and he and he dropped down because probably he was he listened to the animals and the kid, so. So we could have oxygen and to let the animals live. Yeah. Yeah. Down with that. Um, hey, really quickly, Brachi, we have some people here from India that are tuning in. Oh my gosh, Raghu and Om. <gasps> what? Brachi, would you would you wait, would you introduce them, but also make them say what plants they are too? So Raghu and Om. <laughs> what plants are you guys? 
I have the energy ball. So Om and Raghu have been time traveling and they joined us. Uh, please turn on your video if you can. Hi, <laughs> great to see you. So we have um, the energy ball of plants, fungi, tree, and it's filled with a lot of mama earth goodness with which all these lovely collaborators have put in their favorite plants or who they are. And um, Om, it's your turn. And then you can pass it on to your dad. So it's getting ready to move, go thousands and thousands of miles. Did you yeah, catch it all? Uh, I usually <laughs> just go. Um, okay, so, okay, so I think my way of connecting with the earth is just merely going out into it and just, you know, being there. And I think everything around all the birds and all the plants and everything, I just feel connected. Thank you, Om. And if you were any kind of plant or tree, which one would you be? Like, is there one in particular that makes you feel the most connected? Uh, no, I, I think I like all trees and I like all of them. There, there is no particular tree that makes me feel something. I think it, it is the collectiveness that makes me feel whatever it is. If it was just one tree, perhaps I wouldn't even feel it at all. Very diplomatic of you, Om. That's very, you're going to be a great politician one day if you're. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Raghu? Raghu, pass it on to you. What do you, what, what plant, what plant, tree, or fungi resonates with you? Okay, so in my case, uh, I, I had this inexplicable connection to bamboo quite a while back, uh, many, many years back. Uh, I was on a trip somewhere and I saw this uh, cluster of bamboo. And that day it was like a very direct connection. And because of the influence, a uh, bunch of you know stuff we have done in building our house, for example, the entire roof of this house is made of bamboos. So that's what I connect with, yeah. That being said, can you, Prachi, can you introduce what, where they are, what's going on? Why, why are Raghu and Om tuning in all the way from India at seven in the morning? What's, what's going on? <laughs> I, I, can do that. I can do that. Okay. So, uh, so basically, uh, uh, we used to live in the Bay Area, Silicon Valley. And uh, uh, at some point in 2008, we shifted to a farm in the south of India and started doing organic farming. And we've been here for now more than uh, about 12, 12 years now. And uh, it's, a, it's a nice agro forest, which we call. We have about eight, 9,000 trees that we planted. And uh, so it, it's, a, it's a nice thriving forest. And uh, in the context of the farm, we indulge in farming and health-related activities. We do a lot of health workshops. And uh, we also have an eco-friendly house, which we help others construct. And uh, of course, home is homeschooled and we do a lot of native art and crafts. So uh, anything and everything you can think of uh, under the umbrella of sustainability, uh, that's what we focus on. And uh, it's been our lifestyle for more than a decade now. Uh, and, and home is totally grown only on a farm. Uh, and so we call his uh, journey farm schooling instead of homeschooling. I love so uh, that's the brief. <laughs> and and uh, one of the ways that Om has been uh, deeply connected to nature is that he picked up a photography uh, a few years back, two, three years back. And ever since he has been doing a lot of photographs, uh, nature and otherwise. And uh, that's one of the means through which he connects. And uh, we were not a little bit ready with a slideshow, otherwise we would have tried something. So uh, as this progress, if we can put together something quickly, I will do the screen sharing. Yeah. Beautiful. Om, do you, do you have any questions or anything you want to share in regards to your experience? Like 
work, living and growing up on a farm and, and helping to build a forest, is there anything you can even tell us? Like, because we're, like, we're in America, is there anything that you can kind of like teach us? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I've been here and I think for the city people, it, it's amazing because they live here and then they come here. But I still live here, wake up and then I go into the farm. It feels so magical and so different and everything. And then even for me who lives here, it feels like that. I don't know. I cannot imagine how amazing it'll be for you. Very beautiful. I love that. <laughs> any anything, anybody? I want. I want to bring it up to everybody else too. Like uh, anybody else want to share anything? Haven't heard from Mick. We haven't heard from Katarina. We haven't heard. Oh, we we got we got Annabelle over here. Annabelle, hi. Um, anybody else want to share? Charlie, I would love to share something. Yes. Yeah, um, so I actually recently connected with um, a brother here in, in Pasadena area who's starting a food forest for the, uh, the black indigenous and people of color community specifically. Really, he's, uh, so he's working with an African communities, uh, African cultural center and uh, really making sure that people kind of in the inner cities are able to come to this farm. It's a, it's a food forest actually. So another way of saying what, what you were saying, you know, agroforestry, but in an urban setting. Um, and so the, the idea that you can, we can actually build these kinds of um, self-sustaining ecosystems even within a, a city is pretty amazing. Uh, and so it's a real kind of amazing encounter to, to find this group and, uh, and, and see that they're starting with this soil that's just completely compacted and dead, right? And they're going to add compost and mulch and trees and plants, and it'll revive, right? Um, and and it's definitely a dream of mine to do something like that uh, someday. Uh, and also, one thing I wanted to mention from the film, which we haven't really mentioned, is the fact that they're they're talking about humanure, like the composting human waste. Now, this is something that was got a really bad rap for so many years. Um, up until really like the last decade or so. And, and it's, I, I think like it's ridiculous that we flush our waste down the toilet. It's just, it's, it's like totally criminal. You know, like this is something our, our feces could become the next generation of plants, right? If it's just processed properly, you know? So Wait, are, and, you talking, and, are you talking about poop? I'm talking about poop. Are you That's talking what? about poop here? Okay, because I, I love poop. All right, if we're going to talk about poop and get into that, all right? Actually, 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 with that being said, Mick, I, I, I do want to bring that up. We definitely should spend a little bit of time talking about poop because I'm curious, especially from the kids' perspective and the adult, why do we have an aversion? Why do people get like, why are people so grossed out? They don't even talk about poop. I've gotten in trouble, guys, in like places for talking about poop. Like people have been really offended that I'm talking about the how health is related to poop. And like, why does it offend people? How do we fix that problem, you know? Um, but before we go there, Charlie, you, you wanted to say something. So I want to acknowledge you, bro. Yeah, thank you. Um, I kind of wanted to share because I used to live in LA. So straight in the city, um, I used to have my own little container gardening. So I could only grow as many tomatoes as my little container could do. But uh, I moved to uh, Houston three years ago and lived in uh, my sister's house, which is more of the suburbia house where basically the people buy the large lawns and um, you have basically Mexicans come in and take care of the lawn. So they don't really touch the lawn. They have really nice lawn, huge lawns. And then um, my dad lives kind of across town where he has been composting all the vegetables and food that he eats and has been kind of growing this giant like garden in his backyard. And he's got like a third of what my sister has. So coming in, um, Coming from LA, I thought I was like, oh, I know how to grow stuff, right? Because I've been doing container gardening. And when you buy a container, you buy the dirt too. So when I came to Texas, dirt, it's not called dirt. It's called dust. Like it was really hard to grow anything. And I could only grow grass. And it was really, and my dad would like watch me. And he, he, would, he said, I wanted to see you do this for a year before I said anything. So it did take me a year to realize I needed soil <laughs> and not just what's already on the ground. So 
I, I learned the hard way, but I, it really helped me appreciate that lesson because now like when I see soil versus like you see dirt and you just see really, really nice grass that's grown here in Texas grass, right? And it has a name here too. They call it St. August grass. And it's, it sucks because it's actually really bad for the dirt because it grows really well on like um, mud, but it doesn't add to like, because here everybody still uses weed killer. So like all the plants that I learned in Chinese medicine are all the plants we actually kill just to keep this really nice green grass here. So it's been super interesting since I've been here and buying and buying a lot of dirt that is already composting. And you, you realize I'm spending so much money on buying dirt. So I had to teach my whole family because they were throwing so much food away and all of it could have been turned into compost for years. So I started having bins of, of just plastic boxes for them to put compost in. And over time it went from like one to like two. And now the kids know, and, and they're like already know not how to throw compost. And I've been building a compost pile in the backyard. So it, it's, it's really shifted because it really has to start with the children, right? Because they have to understand when they eat, what is compostable and what is not. And the things are not compostable, maybe we shouldn't be eating that, right? And that's kind of where like, that's really helped them understand. Um, and I am also studying Chinese medicine. And if we ask you for a question, one of them always is how is your poo? Because we need to know how well you're doing. So it's actually super important that since then, like, you know, we compost and I'm, they're turning, basically taking the dirt that we have or the, the, the mud that we have and putting it into the compost and teaching the kids how like that turns into the the like really nice black soil. So that's been my own journey. And it's been like, I've been making sure that everybody that I run into understand this kind of lesson because I want them to understand that it's not just whatever is on the ground is ready to go. You actually have to understand that you have to put more nutrients just like you have to feed yourself more nutrients. So it's definitely been a journey for me and um, I've learned- in, tech, in, in Texas, we call it dust. We call it dust. It's not dirt. It's All not right. I reckon in Texas, we, we don't do any pooping. We don't poop in Texas. We just throw it all away. <laughs> I'm definitely hoping that we can really like convert a lot of nice land here into like regenerative. So that Texas, because it has so much land, but it's, I can see it where a lot of the, these new um, suburban homes where everything's cheap, you know, because the dirt doesn't grow anything. They just build homes now. And so you know, I hope to buy a whole bunch of land and be able to create gaps of like location where people aren't killing the land and we're still able to have regenerative space. Uh, Kelly, I see your hand up. Yeah. Um, thank you for that story and the dust and that no one poops in Texas. So that fun fact now. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to, as you're sharing towards the tail end of that, Charlie, the part of the film with the work that they did over the 14 years in China to regenerate that land, I just want to like bring attention to that in this container of how amazing that was, and, like how powerful it is of like the capacity of what we can do to cultivate change when we're aware of like just loving the earth and tending to the soil. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that and then maybe just plant a seed, a conversation of ways that we can continue. It's kind of going into that, like these lands and just amazing what they did in 14 years. It was a completely different place in 14 years. It's doing so good. So I just wanted to kind of throw that from the film into the mix and see other people's thoughts of like key takeaways or moments that really hit them. I think I saw Hengi. Oh, wait, wait, Amaru, Amaru, you want to go first and then we'll get Hengi after you. Uh, it's important to poop because it's for our health and if you don't poop you could die because it's, it's basically uh, it's basically it's basically like all these bad chemicals that they have to poop out and and it helps the plants because of fertilizing it fertilizes the plants and and uh, and yeah I agree. I'm all just, about that poop. 
just as a fun fact there are some here like on this land i'm on a garden and orchard there's some plants that like to be peed on so noted that they always tell us if you guys ever have to go to the bathroom the papayas really love it and they'll and if you pee on them so yeah hey hangy um yeah i appreciate your question kelly but I actually had a question for Charlie prior to that, or like a follow-up question, um, because I'm curious for those of us that are in urban areas or for children that can't, you know, I, I used to work with shipping a lot of kids out or busing them out into like festivals and making sure they get exposed to mindfulness practices and such, but so many children um, and youth and parents actually socioeconomically cannot afford to even take the time off to learn about these practices. Can you maybe Charlie share with us like a couple of like tips or tricks of your top three maybe of how you would go ahead and start your own composting structure. Let's say if you live in an apartment, if you don't have a house, if you don't have a garden or a yard, um, do you have any tips or tricks you want to care to share with us? Sure. Um, in LA, it was it was hard. I had a warm composting bin, um, but it's it's much harder to have like a small space to try to create your own compost because um, a lot of compost and a lot of heat is really good at creating compost. So when you have a house with land, then it works really well because then you can grab like the dirt that you already have and simply just like have a plastic bin, and then. Um, you know, you can put like holes at the bottom of it and all you do is put regular dirt, start putting the compost and just layer. Um, and just putting that in the backyard and simply just letting that dirt kind of slowly, um, you know, create dirt. And then eventually, um, I guess even in, in a, an apartment, the problem is it's, you have to make sure that food scraps don't smell because then you have like a lot of, yeah, you have a lot of, uh, what are the, the possums or, you know, all the night creatures that go in through the trash can. So that's where like, you know, I had to even teach the kids here how to like put dirt over the fruits of the food. Cause once you put the food there and you leave it open, all these bugs come in and they start and it smells up. So it's really just understanding the layers. So having like dirt that you need to convert to, cause a lot of people think that compost is just food waste, but actually just regular, just good old dirt. <laughs> needs to actually start to um, create that heavy mass. And then um, the, basically that dirt will encompass kind of like the, the, the food scraps and the food scraps will become liquefied and then they will mix together. But it's really, you do need like, so, you know, actually I know California, at least in LA, they actually allowed um, the sidewalk section of your house to be turned into grow, growing food space. So I've seen neighbors who actually use that space and converted it into uh, cornfields or like little corn patches. But so that dirt, you can easily just grab that, put it in like a big bin and then just start layering your, your trash. And that I think would be, um, you know, really good just to like start a little semi kind of recycling section. I have an idea too. We can have, we could start a poop mobile and drive it through the inner city, you know, and be like, all right, we're gonna pick up everybody's like, you know, like food scraps now, you know, and then we can like, you know, create like a garden, like that's like in that area, like out of a, out of like a, we could convert like a parking lot or some, some like wasted land, you know, there's so much land that's not used. Um, but yeah, poop mobile. So if anybody wants to join the poop mobile, it might smell a little bit. So you might need to like bring, like make, make wear a face mask that has like essential oils in it. That'll help a lot. Um, <laughs> uh, wait, Brachi, you want, there was a question really quickly that you wanted to pose to Ragu and them. And also before you even ask that, maybe Ragu has some also tips for any secret that like what, what Hengi asked, maybe he might also have a perspective on that too. Um, but go ahead, go ahead, Brachi. Well, um... Ragu, go, if you have any tips for people who live in urban spaces on how to connect with nature and start farming, let's start with that before I ask my other question. Um, actually, uh, we're saying we're saying bye to uh, Clara uh, and Amaru and Mama. Good night, guys. In New York, and have a good sleep. Thank you for coming. Sweet dreams. May your poops be great. 
<laughs> hey, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so I'm, I was saying that uh, there's a lot of urban farming that happens in India. And uh, basically the way you do it is if you have any kind of mud patch around the house or on top of your terrace, uh, in India, a lot of houses have this terrace concept. where It's, it's open to the sky flat area where you uh, put a lot of grow bags or you know other kind of structure and fill it up with different kinds of uh, mulch material and you start growing. What I would say is that uh, seeing people attempting to do urban farming for a long time now, what I would suggest is to begin with just one thought. That's all. All you need is a beginning. So instead of some research and all that, you just pick one thought. Any and then start growing for some seeds and stuff, some greens that grows rapidly. So uh, the, the key is that you try something and you get, get a feedback. And once you have experienced it, you know, you put something in the dirt and then something grew. So it doesn't even matter what it is. So once you have the connection, once something really comes out, then one thing leads to the other. This ton of stuff uh, available on the net that if you begin with something, then something, it leads to something else. The second most important thing was doing it with somebody else, own house or a neighbor or anyone, just one more person. And you just trade some tips and, you know, grow a little bit of this and that. So uh, some kind of a company and some kind of a beginning. If you do that, then something will really come out of that. Otherwise, people end up reading a lot of this and browsing on the net and keep talking, but really nothing happens. So uh, some company and some beginning. So those are the key things. Thank you, Raghu. The last time we met, um, I know you were talking about creating a broader community of people coming back to the land and connecting with the land. And you're frozen right now, so I'm not completely sure if it's going through, but let me know. Um, you had this project where you were connecting people in urban areas like Ryan and Kimia, who would like to be out in the country and farming with people who have land based on a concept of trust and cooperation. Uh, would you be willing to share about that idea and what might be happening with that right now? Oh, it could be frozen. No, oh, no. Yeah. Um, actually, the idea is that uh, we came to know a lot of people who own farming land. Uh, either they are doing some farming in it or nothing is happening on their land. Okay, so we came across a lot of land owners. And then we also came across a lot of urban people who would want to farm, but they didn't have land. And uh, land being like a really Oh no. Uh, so the, the idea killer is that on one hand, you have people who have a lot of land that they're not using it. And the other hand, you have people who want to do something, they don't have the land. And, and we knew both these kind of people. And, and so we thought we'd put them together and see something could happen. They've been attempting it in small ways. And what typically as people, you know. Oh no, it's cutting out, huh? Darn. Well, let, well, let's let's throw that other question in there earlier that we we were talking about. Yeah, Raghu, it's cutting out. Try turning off the video. See if it helps the bandwidth, and we can go with just audio. Yeah. 
Well, I liked his idea, though, of bringing the two people together. Yeah. And that's something maybe we can also explore here in America, right? Like, and and also, I mean, I throw that out, out, out to Cameron, right? Like, Cameron, do you see a potential for, like, also, like, helping kids, like, who are, like, from inner cities and different places to get, can, can we, like, is there a, do you, do you see a path of like connecting them to farms and places that need regeneration? What do you think? It's gonna take like, it's gonna be a long route and path to be able to do that. But there is probably a, just an idea out there that can educate kids because it's, probably more important to educate uh, people at er earlier ages than adults, no offense. But when when they grow up, they'll think that it's normal and then they'll just keep on helping him, maybe even become a role model for other kids and they want to help. It's like a nice chain reaction or domino effect. Yeah, <laughs> That's, that's kind of like if, you know, just so you and Trinity and all the other kids who end up watching this, that's kind of what we want to do for you guys. Like we would love for you guys to be leaders and showing other kids and making it and help you make it fun. Because I think when things are fun, then like, it's like, oh yeah, I want to do that too. So when we can make taking care of earth fun, that's it, you know? Or we can make it into a game. What do you think about that? Like a video game to like, that'd be cool. I like video games. What do you think, Charlie? That's I love video games. <laughs> <laughs> what if the video game was Earth? Oh my gosh, Earth is the video game. What about that? Um, Trinity, what are your thoughts about poop? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I think that that would be part of the video game. There would be lots of shoveling poop in that game. You'd be just like raking it in. You're like each scoop, hundred bucks. Hundred. The coin just keeps going. Ding ding. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not really that is so not the case but it would be fun if we if it would be more fun <laughs> but there's so many different types that we raise a lot of animals here too and not all poop is created equal you I mean you have you have the horses that has to be aged you can't put it on your plants hot you'll fry your plants it's got to be aged for 110 days so that's something that you got you got to have like foresight like you know about how your intentional purpose and how you want to use it as opposed to when we when we raised rabbits, um, you can go down to the the um, nursery, the agricultural store, and spend anywhere from fifty to ninety dollars on a on three gallons of, you know, stuff that's farmed from the sea, seaweeds, kelp, that sort of thing. That's um, also you know it's it's kind of imported. We're we're far from the coast, so that's a whole nother industry that's that's taking place and leaving kind of a carbon footprint, right? We're just raising our rabbits and then you can go and that is, um, you can, you know, it doesn't have to be aged. It's like, you can put it, I, I, I could give the plants for a week, this expensive nutrient from the bucket or one dose of, of uh, topsoil, like built, like again, building the soil with the rabbits, um, pellets i like to call them pellets and the the plants it, they respond so they respond so quickly to the more organic form of what they would be used to getting than something that's imported from the sea that you paid a lot of money for so it is it's more um uh, yeah we're not saying sustainable anymore it's more it's um it's more rejuvenating it's more um uh reviving for just for the whole for the whole um you know everything that's involved not from the plants to the animals to the soil to it's like everything is is involved in the process and it's not it's not so uh, decarpartmentalized so to speak what do you think trinity do you have any thoughts on that um have you helped with the poop at all have you been involved with any of the poop scooping yes when we first had the horses, my job was um, shoveling, shoveling the poop, actually. We have mountains. We have mountains. Yes. And, now we're, and, and, then, and now on top of all that that's aged, we are we're starting to plant trees, um, 
um, we've planted cedar and willow and um, lots of different things in those in those big mounds that have aged over time. So it is about re it's about rebuilding and and uh, reviving and regenerating stuff that. Yeah, people here used to bury trash into the earth. So, as they, like you said, there's stuff that never, never composted down. It was just buried inside the earth. So we find a lot of that over just, you know, the 50 years of people that lived here before and not knowing how to handle that type of stuff. So we're, we're doing things now in a different manner that hopefully 50 years from now, we can be more proud of what we did than the 50 years before. Sure. Yeah, it's important. And, and, to, and to respect everybody's time, we're almost at seven, but I do want to throw out there that like, um, I, I do want to present something since we do have, this is for kids and also for inner kids. Um, do any of the kids who are on the call, do they want to like share something? Like, is there any message they want to share to the adults? Because at the end of the day, this earth is going to be yours after hours after us, you know? So do you guys have a message for us about the, in reference to this movie and farming and <laughs> earth? Like Cam Cameron, you want to go first? You want to think about it? You want to meditate on it? I... Yeah, yeah. All right, meditate on that. Think about it. I'm going to come back to you. And Trinity, we're also we're going to come back to you. We want to hear what you what your thoughts are on that. And and while we're waiting for you guys, um, does anybody else want to share anything on that on that aspect? Is there is there any like prayer or call that we can, you know, based on this movie? Like, is there some sort of call to action, or does anybody want to bring something up that we should be aware of and follow follow up with? Yeah, one last thing. I think we also did mention about actually all the animals are part of the ecology of making soil, right? Because, you know, here we have lawnmowers who cut grass, but yet when we think about organic ways to actually get your grass taken care of, we have uh, the cows and the bulls and the bisons. I mean, you know, hearing and seeing that imagery of the bison like was horrifying, you know, and we are moving the space of artificial show intelligence, which is super ironic because I used to code programs all the time. And we used to copy nature to write programs to have these machines do the work where the animals already do it. You know, the bees, you know, the, the cows, like all of these farm animals have been involved in actually continuing to help us with the ecosystem. So we do have to remember, instead of thinking that we can create something that nature has been doing before we've been here, let's be real. <laughs> and before we were here, it was already doing what we weren't doing. So, you know, I think it's just remembering that we already have great uh, other species that help us do the work that it's supposed to be easier to maintain nature. So I don't know why we're making it such a big deal, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I'll say something. Okay. So, um, you know, I've, I've studied climate change for a long time and I have, a, I have a PhD in studying climate change and all around energy efficiency and clean energy. And, you know, I, we've recently gotten into um, indoor ag because in cannabis because of how dirty it is in terms of energy use and chemicals. And, and it's all gotten me thinking about our food and, and you know, the, the glyphosate and all the chemicals in our food. And I felt like Kiss the Ground um, lays out this really simple approach. You know, the earth is here to sequester, to hold the carbon, and we don't have to make it so complicated. And so I thought that was a really nice message um, as someone who's been studying, 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 studying for so long. It's really, really simple. And KISS also, hopefully this is, is child appropriate. Um, when I was growing up, it used to stand for keep it simple, stupid. And, um, you know, I just think about like, this is really simple. And this message of just being thoughtful about how we're growing our food and how we're treating our land it's not that hard and we can solve. Oh, I like that. Keep it simple, sweetie. That's so much nicer than what they used to say to us. Um, <laughs> I love that. Um, it's just, it is, it's simple. Let's keep it simple, sweeties. We got this and we can solve this. And all we have to do is pay attention to, you know, how we treat the earth and, and what we eat and what we put in our bodies. So that's, Beautiful. And 
And we got a we got a raised hand from Cameron. What's up? Okay, so everyone has done this, and everyone in this room. If you haven't done this, you're perfect. But someone has said they were going to do something, yet they still haven't. They would have said they were going to take out the garbage, but they wait like two weeks for it. Or they were going to up their grades, but still not changing. People are like watching videos online, like on Netflix and YouTube, even social media, and are saying, oh my God, turtles are dying because of straws. I'm going to help them and support them. And you're thinking about all the wonderful things you could do, like signing up for cleaning up the ocean or devising plans for helping the ocean or just simply using like a web browser that helps them. But at the same time, people are just not doing what they can do. They're just either busy or they're slacking off. I wouldn't say I'm not slacking off, but everyone should do their part and try their best from using a search engine to donating money or donating uh, their time and work and life to help this for a cause. And it's pretty sad to see this for people are just wanting to make money quick, cheap ways. So they harm the earth. They're not just harming the earth, they're harming actual beings, they're harming other people, they're harming themselves. They're just, people are destroying everything, but there's still that tiny little sand particle out in the vast desert. And that one tiny particle is our hope. And it's, we could do it. It's right there. It's the one last thing we could do. And there's many plans we could use. We could use all of them. We could use only one. It could be a small from stopping plastic straws or helping solving just this major crisis happening on around in the world. I'm done. Damn. Drop the mic. Drop the mic. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. But um, and what about Trinity? Do you have anything, Trinity, for us? Um, yeah, um, I actually thought of this when we were watching, um, Kiss the Ground, or Kiss the Ground, um, is when it says that, um, when we're using all of that, um, chemicals on our food, it's releasing carbon, carbon dioxide, um, into the air. And um, global warming is actually caught is actually caused by carbon carbon dioxide. And so I just had an idea: if we just stop using those chemicals, then global warming might slow down or something like that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. You said it, Kat. It's it's a lot simple, more simple than we we imagine. Um, anybody else? Any other? Any other? I I, I do want to acknowledge, Cameron. Did you pop your hand up again? No. Uh, I do want to acknowledge Om and Ragu who said in the chat. They said, the "Idea very simple is to collect seeds. Capitalize." collect seeds, all right? Any fruit, vegetable you eat, if possible, remember to collect its seeds. Grow a collection of these seeds, and this always leads to interesting possibilities, including seed art. Hey, Mick, do you want to do a seed art, like, play shop? That would be cool, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, because Mick does <laughs> Mick does our art play shops. So he's our he's our resident, um, what's that guy's name? The guy, like, who we used to watch on PBS? Rick. Rick Bob, Bob, Ross. Bob, Bob Ross. Ross. So he's our he's our cosmic Bob Ross. So you know, like look out he for that. He paints happy trees. <laughs> happy trees. Bob Ross. That's, I love a, that. that's an excellent suggestion.
question, Om and Raghu. Yes, we have to collect seeds and I do recommend that and eat them too because they're so good for us and healthy for us too. Um, anybody else want to drop any wisdom before we before we uh, call it a night and have a beautiful weekend? Yes, Hingi. We saw I Hingi. just want to say that I have eaten a very large seed, which means I can't sit on this chair anymore and I really have to hop off. But it was very nice to talk to everybody. I'm very full ah! of the giant seed. So <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to bow out. I really appreciate this beautiful collection of people. If anybody wants to stay in touch, let's just unite and re just reinforce this beautiful dialogue in a way that's practical and active for our kids. Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you for showing up. Yeah. Awesome. Anybody else? How you guys, anybody else want to share? And share and share and bounce. Share and bounce. By the way, that was an awesome goodbye. <laughs> yeah. That's an awesome goodbye. Did not expect that. No. I just want to say as a last little, you know, note that, um, you know, we are the hope, you know, when everything, everything seems very dire, but we are creating that change every Friday here in this um, area where I am, all the farmers come together and we work on their land, they pick a project. So this morning I went to our neighbor's land and we helped him chop down the pigeon peas and use that as the ground cover for the kava. And it was like climbing through a jungle, his, his way he was set it up. It was so awesome. And it was very um, sequential. Like once this row of the plants are done and their season's over the next one, that's their season, right? And so, um, and he, he has it in such an amazing system. And so we're educating each other while we're helping each other. And then we share food together and we talk about what we can all grow so that we're there never a shortage of food. So that we always have food for each other. And, um, you know, so I just wanted to share, they all, you know, uh, they were still having the meeting when I came here. And so they were sending love and light out and, uh, you know, letting us know that's amazing that we continue doing that and sharing our compost tips and sharing how we can continue to grow. So, um, you know, it's all happening. And, you know, the more we get together and localize with the people that are around you and Amaru, um, um, so Aram, Om and Raghu, their idea of collecting seeds is amazing, right? Because that's almost even money. You can use that to trade with people. Or if you have land, well, I have the seeds. Maybe we can grow them, you know? So we are learning how to work together to move society forward in the conscious way. So um, I just want to appreciate all of you for showing up and for um, honoring and, and respecting the transition that we are currently in, knowing that, um, knowing that uh, it's possible because we can put, do anything when we put our minds together. So just appreciate each of you. Yeah. Beautifully said. Yeah. Thank you. Beautiful. Anyone else? Last words. You guys feel good about that? You feel complete? Do you like that? Sarissa, you dropped it right there. That was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you all. I mean, I think this is this is why we're here. You know, now we I feel hope. Like that's what I feel after this film. I feel and after our conversation right now and us talking, I'm very hopeful. And Cameron, what you said, we are that spark. All you need is a spark. You know, all you need is that one grain of sand. So we're we're it. This is us. So let's rock and roll. It's game time. You guys ready? All yeah. right, let's come up. So thank you. Level up. <laughs> let's level up. So with that being said, much love. You guys have a wonderful dinner, evening. Take care of yourselves. Thank you, thank you Charlie. Appreciate thank you guys. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night. So Good night. Yeah. You guys going to dream about the plant you were. So you're going to become the plant when you sleep tonight. So just let you know. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> Blessings. Bye. Blessings. Bye, guys. Bye. See you next time. Bye. Bye.